good night. If you have trouble falling asleep, I have a few little props used for hypnosis that might help. Or maybe not. <sighs> Either way, sweet dreams. <sighs> I'm afraid I find myself going into standby mode without Lynette by my side. I mean, I can handle my own business just fine, but it takes some getting used to. I'm sure you can understand. You also have a... I mean, always have Paimon with you, after all. Magicians generally do not reveal the core secrets behind their tricks. But if you don't mind becoming my apprentice and calling me Master Linny, then that would be different. Hmm. I'm curious how much of it you'd understand, and how long you'd last. <laughs> If a magician were to go on stage with their vision in hand, people might suspect the authenticity of their tricks, so I habitually take it off before performing. But since you're interested, why don't you help me hold on to it while I perform? Just be sure to keep an eye on it, though, or it might just sneak its way back to me. Father gave us a family, raised us, and told each of us what we should work towards. In turn, what I can do is very simple. Remain loyal and protect our home. Ours is a kingdom consisting only of children, and Father is our king. No king rules forever, of course, and I know that one day I will be chosen as Father's successor. But that also terrifies me. Please don't mention this to anyone, especially my sister and Fremenay. You think my sister doesn't talk much? Oh, she's probably just not in the right mode. Next time, start by saying activate chat mode to her. If you're lucky, she might have a great deal of things to say to you. Hmm, and if you're not lucky, well, she'll just stare for a while, but hey, at least you'll get to see a different side of her. My sister and I have always been inseparable. There's no hardship we can't overcome as long as we're together. And similarly, we share all our joys with each other. There's nothing in the world I treasure more than my family. So I know what it must be like for you. <sighs> and if I find out anything at all that might help you, I'll be sure to let you know. My naive little brother still believes in fairy tales. <laughs> I envy him, really. Uh, just to be clear, though, he didn't actually tell me that. I just happened to see what he keeps in his secret drawer once. <laughs> really, it was an accident. So please don't tell him, or he'll get mad at me for sure. Monsieur Nervillette rarely appears in public, almost as if he's intentionally trying to put some distance between himself and the people. At first, I thought it might be just me, but my ever-observant sister noticed it too, so I suppose that must really be the case. In the past, I would let the doves I raised fly freely, and they would always return to me. But there was once when a few didn't return, and by the time we tracked them down, they'd been turned into dove pie. <sighs> Even now, I still don't know how to give them both freedom and safety. The Hydro Archon Lady Farina is... Very unpredictable, and her manner of speech can be quite provocative, almost as if she sees talking itself like some sort of performance. The people of Fontaine have a particular soft spot for excitement and drama, which is why many hold her in high esteem. Flattery won't get you anywhere with her. She'll only give those who can truly appreciate her art a second look. How does she see me, you ask? Come on now, that hurts. Not only am I a connoisseur of the arts, but honest about it too, as I am in all my dealings. I didn't think that she'd be willing to help strangers like us. If it hadn't been for all of you, Lynette and I wouldn't have been acquitted. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll have to wait for a lovely sunny day to invite everyone to Café Lutes for the most wonderful afternoon tea. Charlotte has been trying to get me to agree to an interview ever since we met. Uh, it feels like she's already asked 20 times now. She has a good nose for finding news, and she's the persistent type, too. But to be honest, I have no desire to find myself in the spotlight of one of her breaking news stories, and so I found all sorts of reasons to decline each time. Clorenz quite famous as a champion duelist, but from what I've read in the papers, she seemed to have gotten into a bit of a pickle. The media's been all over her story, and she's... Uh, 
Well, she's the type that definitely doesn't enjoy that kind of attention. Have you ever gotten a whiff of the perfumes she makes? I quite like them and was thinking to buy myself a bottle. But Lynette's tale indicated that she didn't share my opinion, so that was the end of that. As orphans without parents to shelter us, Lynette and I were forced to roam the streets since childhood, so we've been through a lot. But those experiences have also made us who we are today. We're doing all right these days. <laughs> I have a hat full of hopes and dreams. <laughs> and a family and audience hoping that I don't let them down. <laughs> so even now you still don't completely trust me, huh? You're a vigilant one. Not that that's a bad thing. I'll never need to worry about you getting duped by someone else. But on the other hand, since you've taken it upon yourself to watch my every move, you'd better be careful when you blink. Who knows? I might just tell a huge, terrible lie while you're not paying attention. You'd be in a real pickle then, wouldn't you? Actually, the real me is nowhere near as outgoing or chatty as I appear. More often than not, I only work my verbal magic as a means of getting closer to people. Sometimes I think people would feel sorry for the real me. Do you? <laughs>